So I'm going to enable RIPNG on each interface except for the interface serial 0 slash 0 slash 1 that heads towards the ISP router. So I'll need to set up RIP on these two interfaces, my gigabit and my serial 0 slash 0. And the name RIP1 in all caps will be the RIPNG routing process name. All right, so they can do that. Let's do that right now. So I go back into the router and I'll say interface gigabit 0 slash 0. And I'm going to say IPv6 RIP. And then I'll go space and then a question mark. And you can see use selected string to identify this RIP process. So that's where we'll put in the string or the name RIP1 and then space and then a question mark and you can see we have two choices here default information or enable so what we'll do is we'll type enable and that enables the RIP IPv6 or RIP NG routing protocol on that interface so now I will go to serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 and do the same thing and just do up arrow to enable the same thing but I'm also going to say alright not only that I want to distribute out of my serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 interface my default route that goes towards the ISP router I want to distribute that out of this interface so that the other routers can learn that I have a default route basically to the internet so I'll do that I'll say okay up arrow and I can back out of this and then put that question mark and you can see that there was a choice for default dash information so I'll put that in DEF tab and then a question mark and you can see there's the originate part of it so default dash information originate and that will distribute my default route to the other routers out of the serial slash zero slash zero interface so I believe I'm all done now with this router. I can just do a, a control C and then copy running dash config to startup dash config to save my configuration. I'll hit enter again to accept the default name startup dash config and I've saved my um, configuration. Let's do a show run to take a look at our running configuration here. There's my IPv6 unicast dash routing command that enabled IPv6. There's my gigabit 0 slash 0 interface with two IPv6 addresses and RIP version 1 uh, or RIP NG with the name RIP 1 enabled. And there's my two serial interfaces. You can see one has a clock rate and there's the default information originate command distributing and RIP1 is enabled and I did not need RIP NG with the RIP1 name enabled on serial 0 slash 0 slash 1 because the ISP router is not going to be participating in RIP NG with me because the ISP router is theoretically separate from my network or from my organization and all of the routers that I have control over. So I'm just running this dynamic routing protocol in basically my organization theoretically. Okay, so that looks good and it's time to configure the rest of the routers. So now I need to configure the rest of the routers. I'm going to skip the ISP router and go straight ahead to R2 because we need to run through the same process that we essentially did with R1. So I'll open up R2, go to the command line interface, stretch out the window a little bit here so we can see the commands. I'll hit enter, enable, conf t to get to global config mode and set the host name of the router first okay so the host name is r2 and now I need to enable IPv6 unicast dash routing that turns on IPv6 now we'll go to interface serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 and this is the interface that points towards 
router R1. Now this interface is not the DCE, so we do not have to set a clock rate, we just need to set our IPv6 addressing. So we'll do the link local address first, and let's see here, okay, so IPv6 address FE80 colon colon 2 link dash local. Okay, how did I know that? Well, once again, this is R2, and we're talking about R2, and it's going to get the colon colon 2 address on all of its interfaces. So that's where I got that from. So we set that up, and now it's time for the global unicast address. So 2001 colon DB8 colon DA colon, this is the second subnet, and he's going to be the second host in that subnet slash 64 network prefix. How do I know all this? Well, this is the subnet right here, the second subnet, and colon one for this router, R1, colon two for this router, R2. So that's where I got that from. Then a no shut command, and now the interface is up. Let's take a look. We can see the green lights now on the interfaces and it looks like it's pretty good. So now let's do the other interfaces. So what I'll do is I'll go up arrow, interface gigabit zero slash zero. So this is the LAN facing interface, hit enter. And now we're in that interface. And I'll just do up arrows until I get to FE80 colon colon two and take the same link local address. And then for the global unicast address, this is the third subnet and he'll be the first host in the third subnet. Then I'll do a no shut command and you can see that the interface changed state to up. So now it's time for the last address or the last interface rather um, and it's this interface serial 0 slash 0 slash 1 pointing towards R3 but um, one interesting fact here this is the DC you see the little clock here so this is the DCE interface and R3 has the DTE, so we'll need to put a clock rate on this interface. So we'll just run through the commands here and this is the fourth subnet and he'll be host one. Okay, so we'll run through the commands once again. So let's see here, are we in that interface yet? No, we're not. So we'll say interface serial zero slash zero slash one. We'll set the clock rate Then we'll do up arrow. There's the link local, because it's R2. And then the global unicast address. This will be the fourth subnet. And then the no shut command. And that should be good. Now notice the interface change state to down as opposed to the gigabit which went up and the other serial which went up, once again, because R3's interface is down and we haven't configured R3 yet, so there's nothing to worry about there. What we do wanna do though, is we want to enable RIP on all of our interfaces. So before I leave this interface, let's turn on RIP. So we'll say IP V6 RIP, and this is RIP NG, not RIP, it's RIP NG. So it's the IPv6, version of RIP. Now the name we gave it was RIP1 and then enable. And that turns on the RIP NG protocol on that interface and we need to do the same thing for the other interfaces so we'll just go into interface serial zero slash zero slash zero and do the same thing and also into interface gigabit zero slash zero and also turn on the RIPNG routing protocol and the RIP1 process, which is the name we gave the process. Okay, I'll do a control C, show run, take a look at our configuration and make sure everything looks good. You can see RIP is enabled, RIP is enabled, and RIP is enabled. Now, if everything has worked correctly, we can take a look now at our IPv6 routing protocol. 
So show IPv6 route, and you can see that we've learned about the one subnet, IPv6 one subnet from RIP NG. So you can see the R here. Look here and it says R, R is for RIP. So we learned about the one subnet from router R1, and we've also learned that uh, there is a default route out of the network. Let's see here. So you can see here colon colon slash zero. Looks like there's a default route that we learned about. So everything is working. We could also go up here to PC2 now and see if we can ping PC1. So I'll go up here and say ping 2001 colon DB8 colon DA colon one colon colon A. That is the IPv6 address of PC0 down here. Let's see if we can ping him. And you can see we're getting replies. So now with R1 configured and R2 configured, interfaces up and RIP NG configured, we can, con we can communicate between this network all the way over to this network right here. If we look at R1's IPv6 routing table, show IPv6 route, you can see that R1 has learned about the three subnet from R2. So we're doing pretty good, and all we have to do now is configure R3 and then the ISP router, and we'll be all done. If we look at our completion rate, let's see here, our activity, you can see that so far we're 68% complete on our configurations.